survive. Today, we're going to be removing the differential from this E46 M3 to investigate and hopefully solve two problems I have with it. Problem number one, this E46 M3 has a particularly clunky diff. I know they all have clunky diffs and they're quite famous for it, cutely named M clunk by owners of these cars. This one is especially clunky, seems to have got a bit worse over time over the past nine years I've owned it and it really had a step change in getting worse when I had the bushings on the diff changed to Powerflex items. So hopefully we're gonna figure out what's causing the clunk on the car and maybe even have a go at solving that once it's removed. Problem number two the differential has on this car is the problem that really spurred me into action. I was happily continuing with the car with a clunky diff and I could drive around it and I barely even notice it but the second problem is a problem I actually need to take action about. The input shaft on the diff is leaking and it's been seeping for probably over a year and now it's actually dripping on the floor. I'm worried that I'm gonna kill the diff by running it short on oil and of course it's leaving a streak of oil under the car and dripping oil onto the drive. Really not ideal. So I need to remove the diff and hopefully change the input seal I've never actually removed a differential from an E46 M3, so I'm going to be kind of figuring it out how, as I go, and I will explain everything as we go along and as I figure it out. If you're interested in the whole job, including putting the diff back, hopefully in much better condition than it comes out, make sure you subscribe because this is certainly going to be broken up into two or three videos covering the diff. I am in the unusual but fortunate position where I have a second E46 M3 differential sat on the bench waiting. This one is supposedly in good condition and I was intending to just swap this one straight on but I also noticed this one has an input shaft leak too. So whichever diff goes back onto the car once we've compared them side by side, either option needs the input shaft seal replacing. When the other diff is off the car and side by side, I will then go into a bit more detail about M clunk and what can cause it, but not until the other one's off. Before we turn any spanners, it'll be wise for me to give you a bit of background on the car, just so you know what we're working with before we start. It's a 52 plate manual E46 M3, slick top, no sunroof, Imola Red on Imola Red leather. I've actually owned this car for nine years, so as you can imagine, I know it fairly intimately and uh, I've got a fair amount of experience in driving it. It's got 117,000 miles on the odometer, 30 plus of which I've personally put on. I actually daily this car for the first few years I owned it. It's had all the big scary jobs done, which E46 M3s are famous for. It had the rear boot floor reinforced when it had done around 100,000 miles, it went down to Kent to get done properly by ETA Motorsport. So before you rush into the comments and say that clunk is my boot floor ripping out, it definitely isn't on this one. It also, at around 106,000 miles, went to Mr. Vanos in Darlington to have all the engine work done, where it had its rod bearings replaced. It also had a refreshed head put onto it, head gasket done, and the full Mr. Vanos shebang, really. I think the only thing it didn't have was new pistons and rings, so the engine is very, very happy. It's also worth mentioning that I've done a few OEM Plus mods to this car over the years. It's got Porsche 911 big brake kit front and rear with the CSL discs. It's got the CSL replica wheels, the good quality ones that you get from CM wheels wrapped in Super Sports, which are excellent. It's got the Eventuri intake, which unlocked a lot of induction roar, which I really like. It also has FRP front wings because the original wings were just starting to turn and I thought, look at that, let's just do a one-time fix and switch them to FRP. You may notice the original wings hanging on the wall as some kind of trophy. You couldn't tell these aren't the original wings looking at the car, which I'm really pleased about. There are lots of other small mods I've done to this car over the year as well, which I may go into more detail on in a separate video, but overall it's a lovely example I'm very fond of it. The only thing spoiling it is the clunky and leaking diff. It clunks to the point where when you're manoeuvring around in a car park, passengers turn around thinking someone's just giving you a rear end shunt. It's quite funny actually. Hopefully we're going to get to the bottom of that. But let's crack on, get the tools out, see how we can get that diff off.
don't get it twisted, this is still a UK car, so there are a few small patches of surface rust that you'll have to excuse. The worst being actually this rear subframe, it looks quite crusty to be honest. You'll also notice the car is already on these wooden wheel stands, I call them wheel cribs. Check out the other video about how to make those. As you can see, they're worth the weight in gold. I don't know how I lived without them, but they are very useful today, let's just say that. Now, although the diff is actually only really held in by three bolts, two at the back and one at the front, excluding the prop shaft and the drive shafts, I can see already that there's quite a few things in the way of me actually removing it. For starters, I'm pretty certain I'm gonna to have to take off this rear anti-roll bar. I can see the exhaust pipe is gonna be in the way of me accessing the drive shaft on this side. The V-brace is going to be in the way of me accessing the prop shaft. And of course, we've got the under trays and heat shields, which are almost definitely going to be in the way. So let's start by trying to take off the main hangers for this exhaust back box. The back box is actually held on three rubber mounts, two on this side, one on the other. I'm going to try and remove the nut and bolt that holds the rubber mount to the actual back box, rather than trying to take the entire mount off. As most of this is going to be battling with corroded fasteners, you can see the exhaust as it comes off. So now the driver's side under tray is off, I can see that front diff bolt, the big chunky one here.
Und schon gut. Right, well, looks like we've got a bit of a showstopper, to be honest. When I was taking the parts off the underside of the car, I realised there was a good chance I'd be able to take the drive shaft bolts out from the passenger side without removing the exhaust, because I have a fairly clear shot over the disc. All of them came out apart from one. This is what they look like, and they've got these uh, brackets. On the driver's side, they all came out, no problem. The drive shaft's now loose. On this side, I've got one which is just stuck solid and it's seeming like it's rounding off. So what I'm gonna do now is get back on track, take the exhaust off, and then I'll have all the access I should need to actually take that out. Let's hope it goes to plan from here. So I'm planning to take the exhaust off via this end, the manifold end, where there are four E-Torx nuts and bolts, they're E12, just like the drive shaft ones are. To do that, I'm gonna to need to remove this exhaust temperature sensor and hopefully I can just unplug the post cap lander sensors rather than taking the sensors out. Other than that, it should drop down now. I've taken out the uh, exhaust hangers from that side. Let's see how we go. End. Have you? Yeah. Right, that way slightly. <gasps> Holy sh! Dad, this is heavy. Well, the whole car's coming with it. Okay.
questo So that's the prop shaft bolts out and they were actually easier than the drive shaft bolts once you'd taken off the heat shield. This side, drive shaft, loose. Other side, it's still got that stud of a bolt that I cut the head off in. We'll hopefully be able to take the diff out despite that. The actual shaft where it meets the flange is moving so it's not like it's sealed on still. Now what we're going to do is take out the three main things that are actually holding the diff on which are the two rear bolts and this large front bolt. We're gonna start with this front one. It's a 21 mil head. Nice. Long one. Okay, with the front bolt out, we're going to look at the rear bolts. Now, normally, these would be Etox headed bolts, which are the standard BMW ones. But as mentioned earlier, because I've had PowerFlex bushings fitted, they're actually 19 hex head. The problem you'd have is because of the shape of this boot floor, you can't get a socket and a ratchet on easily. So you're probably gonna end up with spanners. This uh, swan neck spanner, ring spanner, is perfect for this. I don't know what you'd do with an E-Torx, but I guess we'll find that out when we're putting it back, because I'll be putting it back with OE bushings. Oh, we've got the diff out! <laughs> is it, has it survived? I f***ing hope so! <laughs> That's definitely not how you're supposed to do it, but at least it's out. Let's hope it hasn't destroyed that rear cover. Miraculously, it seems okay. Bloody hell. Well, that coming off came as a bit of a surprise, really. Now, for clarification, to take off the prop shaft from the input shaft, there's some slots around the prop, and if you stick a screwdriver in and twist, it should release the flange. Now, mine was stuck on good and proper, probably suction, because it was full of CV grease, more than you'd expect. So now you know how to take the diff off your E46 M3. I hope that video has been helpful to you. Make sure you subscribe so you can watch the next video where I will compare this diff to the one that's on the bench and we can discuss a bit more about what the cause of the M clunk is and which diff I should put back in. And then, for the winning diff, we will fit an input seal and hopefully chuck it back on the car and I'll cover any idiosyncrasies about refitting. But thank you very much for watching.